All right, so far so good. We're at uh, issue number 14 of our tutorial series on making airports for X-Plane. And I think our little airport here is coming along pretty well. Remember last time we added some ramp starts and if you've uh, tried yourself, then you probably found out that the system is still not uh, really up to par. For example, I initially made all these turboprop uh, A size, and then the only model that is really available is this uh, Piaggio. And um, while it's a nice airplane, it's uh, probably too much to see like 30 of these at uh, one airport. Anyway, um, I changed uh, most of these to prop, and that gives you uh, three out of four chance to see a Cessna 172 and a one out of four chance to see a the Baron 58. Uh, there's just uh, very, very few airplane models uh, to pick for the uh, automatic chooser so far, and we just have to live with that. I'm sure they're going to add more, but nevertheless, um, if you vary the type of equipment, as in turboprop, prop, and jet manually, then you get a nice mix like I did here. You see still some are parked over here within the trees. We'll get rid of those in a later video. And um, another thing is I wanted to show you some AI taxing along here, all those uh, AI routes that we laid down the video before the ramp starts. But of course, this airport has no control tower frequency. It has a common traffic advisory frequency, Unicom. And that's why X-Plane does not permit AI aircraft to operate at this aircraft uh, airport yet. However, they are planning to do so in an update. Well, don't uh, get me started on uh, the AI of X-Plane, but um, well, they're working on it like they do on so many things. Nevertheless, today we're going to populate uh, our airport even more, and today we're going to talk about adding ground vehicles. You've probably seen them already on some airports, and um, unlike the automatic cars that move along the uh, autogen roads, uh, you are in charge of placing the ground vehicles and laying down the routing for them yourself. And we're going to do that now. Let's uh, get out of X-Plane here and jump back into WET. And here is our project. And um, for now, I'm going to lock the ramp start so we don't uh, do anything silly with it and uh, we're going to get started on the ground vehicles. Now there are three things that you want to keep in mind or that you have to do when placing ground vehicles. The first thing is placing the ground vehicles themselves and that is done with this little button down here. Once you click it, you get the truck parking label up here and this is exactly what it is. It's the, you, you specify the spot where the truck parks. You can pick the trucks up here, you got all these options from baggage loader to pushback. And um, let's uh, start with a um, crew limo, for example. These are blackish uh, limousine type vehicles, and they would probably uh, be the ones that ferry rich passengers to the airplane. So we're going to place one right here. And just like with the ramp start, you click, you point, or you drag out the way you want the vehicle to point, you let go, and it's here. Now, this is not the way that the limo will look like. There's no 3D preview for that. This is what the crew car would look like, but um, nonetheless, a, a black limo will spawn here and sit here waiting for a job. And you can see that the entry that it creates is called new service truck. You can call it whatever you want. And of course, down here, you could change it. If you say, well, this, you know, I don't want the crew uh, limo. I want a baggage loader here. Click baggage loader and it changes to a baggage loader or a fuel truck or whatever. But let's go with the crew limo first. This is the way or this is where it will park and sit most of the time. Now, you know that they just don't not only sit, they also move around. So we're going to lay down some path for them. And just like uh, you laid down path for the AI aircraft to follow, you lay down path for the ground vehicles to follow. And uh, it's really easy. You just look at allowed vehicles and obviously you want to go to ground trucks. You can 
enter a name or just leave it blank. I just leave the N here. It's fine. And you got the option to do one way or two way. Don't go overboard with a one way, just like uh, you shouldn't for the aircraft. You also shouldn't for the ground trucks. And um, you want to make sure that every node of your network is reachable from uh, every other node. And if you lay down or start going wide with the one ways, you may uh, catch yourself where the uh, ground vehicles can't go someplace and then everything will fail. Um, I think the validation would catch that, but nevertheless, it's uh, a good idea to, to use that sparingly. We'll just we'll get to it now. And um, now the easy thing to remember is uh, you you want to think where will these ground vehicles go? They will go to two places. The one place is they will go to aircraft, uh, specifically only the AI aircraft, the real AI aircraft, not the static ones, but the real ones. And they will go to the user's airplane. Now on, on this airport, obviously the user's airplane is the only one they would go to because um, there are no AI aircraft because the airport has no control tower. But on other airports, of course, you may have AI aircraft and they will get service by the ground trucks they will automatically call them just like you can call them when you play explain through the uh, the menu and then they will come and dock at the predetermined spots at your aircraft and when they are done servicing they go back to park and now the second spot where they may go is the so-called truck uh, destinations it's this button down here if you click it you see it's a truck destination now this is not many many people confuse that they place uh, they they think this is where the uh, trucks should go to service aircraft this is not true this is where the trucks would go to get service themselves for example a fuel truck may go to the to the fuel tanks to get more gas a baggage cart may go to the terminal to drop off the baggage it's not the spot where they go to when they when they attend an aircraft so for example let's say the crew limo uh, once it gets bored of sitting here once in a while it needs to uh, you know get get serviced maybe or or get some gas let's say it uh, it goes back here see there's a little a little hangar and we'll just put a, a destination for it back here and we say the crew limo not the baggage loader, not the ground power unit, not the pushback truck, only the crew limo should go to this spot once in a while. You see this little uh, little circle with a little cross hair in it and the and the arrow. And this is where the crew limo will go once in a while when it gets too bored. Now, if you don't specify any path for it to take, it will just beeline across, you know, through this building, through these trees, across the fence and everything. So obviously we want to lay down a path. And uh, as I said, we'll just start with a path just to make it easy. We'll start over here and we'll say go over here. It will share the road or the taxiway with the cars uh, with, with the planes and it should go here i'm going to hit return you can see here's the um just like the the ai path for the airplanes this it's the same same logic basically and if i click on taxi and flow you can see that we get this little whitish outline i'm going to drag this out so you can see it a little better see this is the the ground truck path and it will go on the right side obviously unless you click um click this left hand driving check mark here obviously we're in the states where they are sane enough to drive on the right side of the road uh, unlike some other countries so um, we'll leave this unchecked and as you can see there's some overlap here with with the aircraft there's just no way around it if i drag it out over here then you would see the, the trucks going this way would go in the dirt so sometimes that's just unavoidable but in principle um, i want to or you want to keep the planes and the cars or the vehicles separate as much as possible don't like let them go on the same center line don't don't drag this over here and say well they can just go on the center line because eventually when they when they meet there's some sort of avoidance logic but it only goes so far and uh, they will they will swerve a little to get out of the way but um, when when you see those vehicles or the planes getting into the way of each other they will eventually start going really slow but they will start going through each other just to keep the the, the traffic moving otherwise um, there would be backlogs somewhere or you know 
airplanes would get stuck in, in, in the vehicles themselves. So what you want to do is you want to make sure that they stay on the pavement because that looks silly if they if they run through the grass, uh, unless maybe it's it's grass like over here where where planes are parking. And then it obviously would be okay for them to go across this grass, which is suitable for driving. And um, over here, I would make them go again on the side of the taxiway far enough so that they don't ride in the dirt um like you can see here's the here's the edge of the of the taxiway so in this case they will share the same uh stretch of pavement with the aircraft and if aircraft ever taxi down here and the vehicle comes the other way well you know what would happen in real life obviously the, you know the guy would never start going down the taxiway if there was a plane there but x-plane is not so smart yet um it, it works they will you know either avoid or clip through um but they won't get stuck but to keep it plausible <clears throat> try to separate them as much as possible if you add another path that let's say we want uh, this one to also go over here back here maybe and then go back here and uh, we want it to go join here again and you see what happens when you when you cross the the path of the ai planes then a joint an automatic joint will be created and that is just normal i am not quite sure why that is in, in my point of view it's it's not really necessary because the you know the planes and the cars they don't need to have you know joined routings but it's the way it happens and sometimes it doesn't happen sometimes you lay down a path and it, it won't create a node then when you try to validate later on it will say oh these uh, there's crossing nodes that need to be split or whatever and then you just click ok and then you just go to edit and you go split and it will create the split nodes that you see here and um, then you can validate it or you you may even have to merge them afterwards but uh, explain validation will tell you and um, then uh, you can you can just follow the commands now the idea of course is to create a path that gets the vehicle close to the airplanes but when you see them move you will see that they will go to the point of this path that is closest to their point of approach let's say um, you know the ground uh, gpu the ground power unit will park right here in front of the aircraft so it will go on this on this path until it's closest to its point of approach then leave it and if you enable the uh, the developer menu where it says show traffic or ground path or, or show traffic paths then you will see what the vehicles do and they say uh, localizer in so they basically go on a on a predetermined stretch approaching the aircraft until they're in the right spot they stay there for a few seconds or a half a minute or so and then they will go localizer out meaning backing out from the aircraft and then they join the closest point of routing that uh, you have laid down. You don't need to create nodes. That used to be the case. Now it's not anymore. They will just go look for the closest stretch and that's where they will go. Then hook up to the routing again and follow that routing again until they're at the closest point where they want to park and then go park from there. Now a word about parking. Um, right now when you when, when you place a vehicle down like this, what it will do is it will go probably over here. Then it will circle back, take a big circle, go right through the building, park like this. Now, in an upcoming version, uh, I've already tested this with, uh, with Austin, they will not park like this anymore. They will reverse into the spot. So it will, it will go like this and then go back into the spot. So now you can safely place vehicles the way real drivers would place them, you know, rear ended parked into their spots. You don't have to leave ridiculous space around them open so they can circle navigate. Just leave a certain cone open ahead of the vehicle. Now at, at, the, at the same time, when you place a vehicle like this, obviously this will not work anymore because what will happen is now the vehicle will go on the dirt here and then try to or maybe open over here and try to park 
into re reverse into the spot like this it, it will still work of course because the vehicles won't crash anything but it will look silly so when you place vehicles keep that upcoming uh, fix in mind you can park the with a with a tail against the building or against the fence and they will reverse into that parking spot in the future i'm not sure when they will add that uh, fix but um, it's it's in line with the with the other fix for ground vehicles that we're waiting for right now if you have h HDR enabled, they will slow to a crawl when they approach each other because the headlights are part of the object and when vehicles get close to each other, they get really slow and try to avoid each other, which is not possible if they enter the beam of headlights. So they go really, really, really slow and you can you can see that when you have HDR enabled, but this will be fixed. And again, the, the parking will be fixed. They will reverse into their spots. So this is a good way to park it. Now, if you want to place more ground vehicles, obviously, obviously you should. You should have a, a fuel truck props, obviously, in this case. And um, now where would it be? I don't know. Maybe it would, it would uh, sit right here. And uh, then, of course, uh, if you know this is a good little area, a little staging area, you could also maybe place a, a ground power unit here and you could also place a pushback truck here. Now, we don't really need pushback trucks here. I don't think we placed any gates, but if you place, if you have gates at your aircraft, you want to have pushback trucks and you want to have them parked somewhere. Now, there's a little, uh, you know, the pushback rod coming out here in front. It's not, you can't see it here, but it, it is there. So keep that in mind when you park the, the pushback trucks, then you want to have a little space in front. And of course, um, you also want to make sure that you have enough ground vehicles, but not too many. Now, what, what is that? Don't place a pushback truck for every gate because that's not the way real airports work. They will usually, one pushback truck will serve maybe 15 gates or so because they're not all pushing back at the same time same with the fuel truck or with the with the uh the baggage loader or so you can experiment a little but don't place too many because it will look silly especially at night because they all have their headlights on and at the same time uh, you you don't um, want to overload the system because it is a little you know it's not really a big burden on on uh, frame rate i would think it was be more of a burden but it's actually fairly light but again if you place 1000 vehicles it will look crazy busy especially on a small airport like this and um, it's not really necessary and in this case since we don't have any ai aircraft operating here anyway you really don't want more than than a few of these but uh, of course you want to make sure that you have all the different variants there are only very few variants that you don't need the one is the crew ferrari in my opinion it's pretty cool but uh, how many ferraris are there driving around except for at the uh, bologna airport where they have a ferrari with uh, as a follow me car which is is pretty cool i've never had the luck of getting guided by it but i've seen it drive by and they really have a, a yellow Ferrari as a follow me car, which is totally cool. We don't have any um, follow me cars in here. We don't have any uh, ambulances or fire trucks here, which is a shame. I hope that they may add them in the future, but who knows? But again, for course, we have a catering truck. Now, a real catering truck wouldn't be at this airport, so you don't have to. You don't have to place it. Uh, just go with what would really be here. And of course, we would have to lay down a path down here um, to enable these guys to get out of their spot maybe like this um, it would share the road you've seen the road coming down here with the ai cars but uh, there's nothing we can do about it uh, that's just the way it is i would maybe let it cross over here then go in front of these aircraft all the way over here maybe go in front of these aircraft and then cut across here and join over here and once that is done, you can go back to V to move this a little over. See here, we have the luxury to not overlap the, the yellow marking for the AI taxiing and still have enough clearance from the aircraft uh, right here. The same thing, I would just scoot this over a little bit. Now see here, we have we have clipping. This, this would not be okay. So I got, got to go back, make these rather clip with the 
taxiing aircraft they will avoid each other but of course if there's a, a plane parked here the plane is just sitting there it can't avoid the trucks and the trucks are totally oblivious of static parked aircraft so if, if the logic places a Cessna here and the truck goes by here it has no idea this this is just another object to him it will happily clip through this one so you want to stay clear of all the ramp starts markings and again the taxi and flow tab is the best way to do it if you're in the regular one you can't see anything now if you make a stretch one way let's say we would make this one one way just for kicks you see that it gets more narrow so sometimes you have little paths that only would support one vehicle then of course it would be possible to say okay the the guys going down this way should go here and the other guys should go make this one way should go maybe from over here to over here and then join here and see now you would have two little separate paths and you could make them um, maybe avoid some columns here in the middle or or you know if there are some special situations but you again you want to make sure that you keep the one-way routings as uh, simple and as few as possible uh, so i'm just going to erase that one again and make this one a two-way again now i'll play some uh, more routings later on um, another word about uh, ground vehicles we have these ones now that actually go somewhere and, and drive around we also have some of the vintage ground vehicles um, obviously we have the the cars and 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 uh, the static cars that you could place as individual vehicles they wouldn't move and we have the ramp equipment and this is the way we used to do it look there's a belt loader and this is just an object so if you place the belt loader here it will always be there it will never move its lights don't shine at night and it's just going to sit there and the same with for example a gpu and we have uh, some some other stuff like the luggage cart uh, the luggage train uh, that you could place and uh, it's just going to sit there it's never going to move of course i can't move it because i'm in the taxi and flow here i am back in the regular mode and i can move it now i'm i'm a little undecided about placing these because what what would happen is if a user spawns here and he calls for ground service trucks and maybe the the real ground service trucks are busy somewhere else he sees the 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 carts parked here and they says why why are these lazy <laughs> not getting uh, on and and uh, starting to serve my aircraft they're just sitting there what's wrong with this with a simulator well the problem is these are just objects like trees or lampposts or anything else they don't know that this guy called for service trucks so um at, on the other hand if you place a million of these real ground vehicles to to make the airport look busy then uh, obviously you'll have all these ground vehicles at night sitting with the headlights on and, and they're all driving around going to their destinations looking incredibly busy and um, this may be a little too much so i i like to use these sparingly in between as well especially some of these are uh where is this guy we had the I can never find them. It's it's an air start unit. Here we go. Air start unit. It's a cool looking air start unit. Obviously, this one will never move, and there's no no ground vehicle for it. So you do want to have maybe an air start unit sitting somewhere, uh, just because it looks cool. And of course, the other one that you want to use abundantly is the cargo uh loader it's this one it's a it's a vehicle that's very prominent on most airports worldwide you've all seen it it loads the the uh the, the cargo uh, containers into anything bigger than an airbus 320 they they have the, the suitcases and cargo containers and you want to place those abundantly uh, on your bigger airports and um, of course unfortunately they never move i think that's that's an omission by uh, x by lamina they should have made this one uh, a real ground vehicle too that actually goes and services aircraft but uh, again it would be really complicated because you'd have to have like little containers on them that move and and that would make things complex real quick after you placed all your stuff um your objects make sure that you go back to taxi and flow and check that the white edge uh, clears anything that you have placed um, for example here this would be no bueno because the car is in the way of the path and uh, you'd have to either move it you know a little further it's not really possible and then if that is not possible you may even consider moving 
this one in so that it can clear the parked uh, car over here and just live with it being a little closer to the to the taxiing aircraft. Okay, that's uh, pretty much it. Keep in mind that you want to have service destinations or truck destinations for every type that you place. It's not really necessary, but if you wonder why your vehicles don't move, um, then that's a lack of uh, truck destinations. And of course, you can have one truck destination for all of them. And uh, in this case, maybe I would make one over over here or somewhere over here that is just suitable for anything that is not taking fuel and then i would place another one over here and i would make this one uh, specific for all the fuel trucks liners props and jets and of course jets is like uh, any jets liners is for airliners and props is for all the prop planes and um clear the, the limo and now we have these three here and they will go Oops, placed another one. They would go over here, stay here for a few seconds, pretending to take on fuel and then go back uh, after they're done. Experiment with that. That's all you need to know so far. That's all I know about placing ground vehicles. Don't freak out if they don't do exactly what you want them to do or if it looks stupid sometimes, if they clip through stuff. Laminar is aware that this isn't perfect and this is not a, a ground service truck simulation. It's a flight simulation. They are considering the trucks to be like a, a visual backdrop that gives the airplane uh, ports a little more uh, a live look. And um, of course, you don't, don't uh, write bug reports that... Uh, you know, the trucks should only go to the port side of this and that aircraft because that's where the fueling receptacle is. You can specify stuff like that in the uh, plane maker. If you if you have an add-on plane or if there's a, a, a even a laminar plane that, that does things obviously wrong and it bothers you, you can do a bug report and they can fix it in the airplane model. Uh, it specifies or in, the, in that plane, under, in that uh, plane maker, uh, you can specify under viewpoints where exactly the ground vehicles should dock or where they should stop and park. If you want your crew car to be sitting on the left side, you can specify that. Um, but um, again, don't don't overdo it. And just like with the AI paths for the aircraft, you want to keep things simple. You don't want to micromanage. And if uh, trucks do things that are dumb or not plausible looking, then it's not your job to to uh, design around that uh, you can provide provide bug reports of course but uh, don't expect them to do miracles okay i hope that you enjoyed this and uh, not quite decided what we'll do next on the next one i think we'll go with lighting and then after that we're closing in towards the end of this uh, tutorial series we'll clean up and talk about exclusion zones and uh, error checking and so on but that's for a, another video